Hey everybody, it's time for another episode of Coco and Daltz. I'm not Daltz. And I'm not Coco. You don't have to do that voice every time. I'm not Coco. <laughs> no, that's not better actually. <laughs> So if you're in the States, we're coming to you live to your iTunes podcast app on Memorial Day, which is a holiday here in the U.S., or is it Victoria Day in Canada? That was last weekend. That was last weekend. Okay, yeah. well, it's, it's close. It's or ho- Meghan Markle Day now, as it's been renamed. No, no, we are not talking about the royal wedding. I'm not going to get off on a rant about oh, that before sorry. we even talk about it. Should we start this podcast over again? I don't want you to be all angry. <laughs> as opposed to hangry, which you seem to think I am every day when I come home from work. I don't want you to go on any sort of anti-monarchist rant and then just totally, totally sidetrack us from the topic of today's to- uh, podcast. Which is why we're not going to talk, uh, talk about Meghan Markle. And instead, we're going to talk about Solo, a oh, Star Wars story. Not which, the Red Cups, either. Not the Red Cups, although we might be drinking some adult libations out of them later, because it yes. is a holiday here in the States. It is. We just got back from seeing Solo, a Star Wars story, so we thought we would... Fill you guys in on what we thought of it and what the box office has been like and what the reviews have been like, et cetera, et cetera. So, Daltz, you're a whole lot better at summaries than I am. So why don't you tell the folks at home what the movie's about in case they can't tell that it's about (laughs) Han Solo, considering that's the name of the movie. Solo, a Star Wars story. (laughs) The end. Yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know. Okay, so I'm going to totally crib the IMDB entry because I think it's more succinct than I could be in okay. this regard. All right, let's do so it. So full attribution to IMDB for this summary. During an adventure into the criminal underworld, <laughs> Han Solo meets his future co-pilot Chewbacca and, encounter, and encounters Lando Calrissian years before joining the, rebel, the rebellion. If I could only speak, I'd be fine. Maybe it's because of the voice that you're using. You don't think that's real? <laughs> Coco, could you pass the salt, please? <laughs> I'm going to pass you the salt. I'm going to pass you the salt. <laughs> so it's essentially a Han Solo origin story. Yes. Which, uh, whether we needed that or not, is another topic for later on in this podcast. <laughs> but it's essentially, hey, Han Solo, how'd you get to be so rad and cool? And how'd you get the Falcon? And how'd you become a smuggler? And And how'd you get a carpet for a best buddy? (laughs) Yeah. So what did you think of Solo, A Star Wars Story? So I was astounded! (laughs) I loved the movie. Well, I I don't know about I loved it, but I really liked it. Mm -hmm. I thought it was much better than I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. So going into this movie, Coco, you and I were reading reviews and talking about it and hearing box office numbers being thrown around, that sort of thing, which we'll get to. But the expectations were set low going into the movie. Neither one of us actually really wanted to go see it, but... And truth be told, and transparency is always a thing that I believe in, we went to see it for you, the users. (laughs) And also so that we could write off our tickets on our taxes. <laughs> Which is going to be kind of hard to do since you used that gift card I gave you, right? Well, like... The lady charged me, though, for some reason. Yeah, she, she... There, there wasn't enough money left on the card. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, God. What? So I, I had some uh, empties in the car, so I went to the package <laughs> store. <laughs> That while you were getting popcorn, <laughs> that was a really long line for raisinets and Reese's pieces. I was I was starting to get hangry. <laughs> Give me my raisinets, damn it! <laughs> so I've told the story of the summary. Yes. Do you want to tell tell a little bit about the backstory of the whole how this movie got made? Yeah. Um, well, first, let me just say that I agree with you. I enjoyed it a whole lot oh, more. Sorry, than... Coco. How did you feel about the movie? <laughs> Well, we we're talking about empty, so I can see why you get sidetracked. Uh, yeah, I liked it a lot more than I thought I was going to. Like I said, neither one of us actually really wanted to go see it. We went into it with extremely low expectations. I didn't like it as much as I liked The Force Awakens or Rogue One, but I liked it a hell of a lot more than I liked The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi was kind of... Stinky. A flaming pile of garbage. <laughs> so Wow. So given... And even the trailers that I saw, I was... For Solo. For Solo. I was not really into it at all. Because the trailers I saw were focused not on Han Solo. And that's not a good sign when the titular (laughs) character is not actually featured. Titular. I'll take a shot. All right. Yeah. Dulce is having some beer. So... 
So yeah, so uh, what we're talking about, for those of you who maybe have not heard, is... So you're just the, new to this country or perhaps right. to this world. And yeah. You haven't heard anything of any of the backstory of Solo, a Star Wars story. Yeah. So Solo had a very messy production. Um, the original directors, Lord and Miller, were fired at some point uh, during filming. And Ron Howard was brought in to... Because why not? <laughs> yeah, because that's exactly who you think of when you think of Star Wars movies. Is Ron of, Howard. Oh, no. We need a director. Who do we get? I know. Richie Cunningham. <laughs> right. Totally. So they brought in Ron Howard. Um, there were also stories that... Uh, Wait a minute. So I just made this connection. Okay, what's that? George Lucas's movie, American Graffiti, starred Ron Howard. Oh, there you go. So that's wow. why it happened. Yeah, yeah. That's totally why it happened. Even though George Lucas no longer has any kind of control over right. the Star Wars universe. Right. But it's, you know, going back 40 years, 50 right. years almost now. <gasps> right. Whoa, that's a long time. So uh, Go on, I'm sorry. So yeah, so the directors got fired. The um, guy who's playing young Han, Han Solo, who we believe his name is pronounced Alden Ehrenreich, he was. There were reports that an acting coach was brought in for him because he was so bad, and the Disney bigwigs were freaking out because this is Han Solo. This is <laughs> the driver of this movie. This is one of the most beloved characters in all of cinematic history, basically. And this kid isn't up to the task, so... Which is, by the way, is a tough task to be up to. Right. Like, try being Han Solo. Try right. being Harrison Ford. Right. Those are big shoes to fill. They are. Or big blasters to engage with. Right. Or a big fedora if you're Indiana Jones oh, to oh, wear. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So, yeah, so it was just a very messy production. The productions of The Force Awakens and Rogue One were also very famously messy, but so those... these movies all are since Disney took over the franchise. <laughs> correct. Is that correct? <laughs> that is. Hmm. And the overseeing producer for Disney on all of these is one person named Kathleen Kennedy, mm-hmm. who I don't know if I want to crap on her too much for all of this, because I don't know how much of it is she's bad at her job versus... She's a woman, and if she were a man, people would be saying she's coming in and she's trying to clean things up versus right, she's right. a woman, so she's just, you know, ah, she's terrible, and this this woman is overstepping her bounds, and, you know, she's a I, harpy, whereas a man would be decisive, you know? So I think, here's what my opinion is on this, and yes. you didn't ask, but I'm going to provide it anyway. I would love to hear it. It's I think it's just, it's creati- creativity by committee. It never mm-hmm. works, so there's 5,000 people watching dailies of the movie right and they're all weighing in with their opinion Mm -hmm. whereas in previous installments it was a little bit more independent now it was still mainstream because there were still big studios involved Mm -hmm. but it wasn't as there weren't as many cooks in the kitchen right and i just think that a lot of this stuff with disney is Mm -hmm. you get the stakes are higher and higher Mm -hmm. so you got bob Iger having a look at dailies and he's like really is this kid aaron reich is he han solo like right. can he act you know and just and just one casual comment mm-hmm. from somebody in charge sends the whole mess a running down right and um alden aaron reich did actually do a cover interview with esquire in advance of this movie coming out mm-hmm. and uh which i read which you did read and i've got the quote right here he's talking about the acting coach who is apparently a writer director named maggie kiley and his quote on her is she was part of conversations that happened for a couple weeks at one point, but that was basically it. So that's totally a non-denial. That basically means that she he but, had an acting coach. But like, on the surface, though, yeah. two weeks? Is that what he said? A couple of weeks? Two weeks? Yeah. So I think are you going to get acting help in two weeks? I think the original reports were three weeks. So, so and let's I, say it's three weeks. Yeah. Are you going to turn your acting game around in three weeks? I mean, maybe at that point they were so far along in the production that that was all they had left, and they brought her in to... I, I kind of feel bad for this guy. Um, he's pushing 30, so I don't want to call him a kid. But <laughs> he's supposed to be a kid in the movie. He's supposed to be a kid in the movie. But, but he's not. I, he didn't... I, this is going to sound worse than I mean it, but like he didn't... I think you, you put it this way. He didn't sink the movie for me. Yeah. Like The first few scenes... like, And I don't know the order they shot the scenes in, obviously, but like it... The beginning of the movie, it seemed like he was kind of trying really hard to be like Harrison Ford, Devil May Care, witty, 
you know, pithy one-liners. But then as the movie went on, and I don't know how much of this is editing versus his performance. Like yeah. It seemed like he just kind of unclenched. Right. And just kind of like relaxed more into the role and just kind of went with it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I, maybe somebody else could have been cast in that role, but he wasn't like, I didn't watch it and think, well, I hate him and this just totally ruined the movie for me and I wasted money. Yes. So. I, I think the same thing too, is I was on, I had heightened awareness of his acting mm. going in because I knew all the backstory and I'd read the Esquire piece and I knew that he potentially had gotten, you know, called on the carpet for being a bad actor in a, in a mm-hmm. Disney movie franchise that's going to be potentially set the rest of his career right. uh, in the right direction. And all of a sudden he's not good at it and he's on call. He did say to Esquire that he signed for three solo movies. Right. So we'll see if... We'll see if those get executed. But right. I, I eventually just got lost in... I didn't see his acting, in other mm-hmm. words. I didn't see the sausage being made right. in this movie. He just mm-hmm. it, Eventually he became a young Han Solo to me. Mm-hmm. And that, I think, is the truest testament of all, is that I just started watching the movie. Right. Rather than like paying attention. And I think probably some people are doing that out there too. And that might be one of the reasons that... I mean, the reviews have been pretty decent. Yeah. The, the reception in terms of the box office has been muted compared to expectations. But again, those are Disney avenger size expectations. Right. Like, so we're taping this on Memorial Day. The box office... 2018. <laughs> the box office projections are for a domestic total for the holiday weekend to be like 103 to 107 million, which for a non... Star Wars, Avengers movie. It's pretty darn tootin' good. Is really freaking good, but the projections had been that it would make 140 million. So it's 40 million, really. Exactly. Friends. I mean, you know, I, I'd give them that if I had it. Right. You know, I mean, right. well, let's on. go back a couple more times and maybe we'll help them get to the 40 million. <laughs> let's give them a few more gift cards and <laughs> <laughs> more 12.95 right. admissions or whatever it happens to be. Exactly. So I. It, and I think give the kid a break is my I came out came out of that right. movie is like give Aaron Reich a break. He wasn't right. terrible. He actually if there hadn't been all this hoo ha before the movie, I don't mm-hmm. think anybody really would have paid attention to it because he's he he did a, an admirable enough job right. to keep everything moving. He uh-huh. was smart ass enough to keep yeah. the character in the presence uh-huh. and that sort of thing. And like we said earlier, that's a really tough character to play. Yeah, it's everybody knows Han Solo's performance or Harrison Ford's performance as Han Solo. I mean, we just saw it. We just saw it in the force awakens on big screens two years ago. Right. So, and it was the same old Han Solo. So yeah, I, I didn't hate him as Han Solo. Um, Faint praise indeed, (laughs) which I know that makes it sound awful, but I mean, could somebody else have been cast? Sure. So could somebody else have done a better job? Sure. But I'm not gonna, write a strongly worded email to Bob Iger and Kathleen Kennedy saying, (laughs) you've ruined this franchise for me. I will say the casting of Donald Glover as young Rando, spot on. Yes. He was amazing. I just flat out loved him as young Lando. I, I really want young Lando to get an origin story standalone now because that would be fantastic. Well, and like we were talking about in in the, pre-show when we were uh, rehearsing in front of the studio audience <laughs> um, you know the, I think that as good as that movie was today and I enjoyed it again more mm-hmm. than I thought I would I don't think they need another one I don't think they need another solo movie right. where they should go is the Lando Calrissian mm-hmm. turn that into a trilogy because right. he was a really compelling interesting character yeah definitely there was also a story I read that Danny Glover who plays Lando Calrissian in this version uh, Lando Donald. Calrissian. Sorry, Donald what, Glover. What did I say? Danny Glover. <laughs> <laughs> a few years older. Oh, wait a minute. Wrong Glover. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> From Lethal Weapon to yeah. <laughs> Han Solo. <laughs> right. <laughs> so thank you for that. But he, uh, Donald Glover, uh, said that Lando Calrissian identifies as pansexual. Oh, I saw that headline. I did not read that story. So that would, to me, be another way that Disney loves this kind of embracing diversity and and all that sort of thing. So that would be another way that they could, well, let's make a whole trilogy on Lando Calrissian and go with it from there. Well, and especially as you pointed out, like they just had massive success with Black Panther. Right. So why not? Right. Why would not go in that direction with Star Wars, too? Right, exactly. I mean, I... 
I und- So they just announced that there's also going to be a Boba Fett origin story standalone. and Is there going to be a Jar Jar Binks oh, standalone? Oh, bloody hell, there better not be. <laughs> oh my god. Wouldn't that be I, awesome? You've, you've never seen the prequels. I've never so... seen Jar Jar Binks, but I've heard so many, so many bad things about oh, him. Oh Christ, it's oh, <laughs> brutal. And I'm saying this as somebody who's never been able to watch all of The Phantom Menace because it's so bad. Like, I fall asleep through it. And he was featured heavily in the Phantom Menace, but but I and I've now completely lost my train of thought. Oh, Boba Fett. So Sorry. So in the prequel trilogy, Django Fett, Boba's father Dad? slash clone, is actually I mean, he's the father of the clone army for the Empire. Uh-huh. Like because they're all clones of Django Fett. So Boba Fett is actually like kind of a big deal because <laughs> all these clones of him are the imperial army you know are the stormtroopers but yeah you know i'd rather see a lando origin story than a boba fett story he was really intriguing in that he played a really yeah. great role and <laughs> i am now scrolling through actors uh to see if there's anybody that we would have rather seen as han solo oh, okay yeah um i don't think that they should recast. I don't think. No. You know, this, I, is, this is sort of more of an exercise in, okay, humor me. Right. What would have been better? Right. And so we've gone through this list. There's a lot of, uh, so Josh Hutcherson. No. Logan Learman. No. no. Alex Pettifer. No. These are all actors well, under 35. Well, I could I could maybe see Alex Pettifer, but he's apparently notoriously difficult to work with, so I don't know how much that would have been a good idea on notoriously messy productions. Right. You don't need to add that. uh, Right. And this is, by the way, on IMDb, I'm reading the 30 hottest guys under 35. (laughs) And I'm not on this list. I don't know how. I need to write in. (laughs) Dear IMDb. Dear Mr. IMDb. (laughs) WTF. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Seeing as you're all about the acronyms. Uh, Callan McAuliffe, uh, Taylor Lautner. No. We need somebody with an edge. Like, a lot of these are pretty boys, right? We need somebody who, yeah. like, Aaron Reich is not exactly your traditional pretty boy. He's got the dreamy blue eyes, but he's not really, like, you know, he's not perfect. He's not right. pretty. Uh-huh. So I think he was good in that regard. So Chris Mazag- Mazoglia. I have no idea who that eh, is. I don't know. Liam Hemsworth. I he was one of the first people I thought of when we were trying to figure out who we would have recast, and I I haven't seen Liam Hemsworth because in you're enough. in love with Chris Hemsworth. I mean, with the guns, Thor is pretty dreamy. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie, but but I I haven't seen Liam act in enough to know if he has like the, the chops. chops yeah. But I he is one of the ones I thought of. Yeah. Number eight on the list, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> he can't do it obviously. No, because he's, he's Deadpool and. Speaking of Deadpool, can I kind of segue, segue here? Let's do it. Well, let me before we do okay. that, I want to mention one more actor who's on this list mm-hmm. from the Twilight series. His name is Boo Boo Stewart. Boo Boo? So wouldn't it be great to have Han Solo, Boo Boo as Han Solo? Well, why, why, why couldn't he just be Boo Boo Fett then? Boo Boo Fett? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a way better joke. <laughs> we didn't rehearse that, that's just FYI. <laughs> Another one was Joseph Gordon Levitt. Oh, interesting. He's I like him. He's really good. Yeah, he's really good. Anyway, oh Channing Tatum. Maybe Channing I Tatum. Could, I could maybe see that. Yeah, that's an interesting. Uh, I think choice. he. I think he's too old for that role, though. I mean, he's definitely mid thirties. So I. Well, think... he's under thirty five to be on this list. So. Yeah. Anyway, we were anyway, mentioning earlier. So uh, speaking of Deadpool, one of the reasons why you know I mean obviously. A hundred between a hundred and a hundred and ten million is an incredibly good it's a weekend. Great weekend yep. But for a Star Wars movie, it's not it's not good. So <laughs> people are now there's like the, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking, like what went wrong, why didn't this live up to expectations? It's Han freaking solo. Right. You know, there's a built in audience. Built in marketing too, like everybody knows right. who it's gonna be, right? Right. So one of the things that industry analysts are saying is, um, well, first of all, there's Star Wars fatigue. Like the Last I Jedi, the Last Jedi just came out five months ago. Usually, Star Wars movies come out during the holiday season when it's usually heavier Oscar baity 
type fair. Right. So if they maybe just would have pushed it off until December instead of in May, which I'm going to get to in a second, it would have fared better. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it wouldn't have had as much competition. It also would have been a year between Star Wars movies. Mm-hmm. So, okay. I can see but that. But also... People just paid money three weeks ago to go see Avengers Infinity War. Right. Last weekend, they just paid a lot of money to go see Deadpool 2. Right. And now here comes Solo, hot on the heels of those two crazy movies. Right. Like, maybe people just had to pick which one they weren't going to yeah. go see, and this is the one they decided not to go see. So, Well, and those are the top three movies. Just looking at the box office for the weekend, mm-hmm. the four-day weekend, which is obviously not completed yet, but Solo is number one, Deadpool 2 is number two, and Avengers Infinity War is number three. Right. So, And Deadpool has taken in a crazy amount of money. I believe I read earlier today that in its two weekends of release, it's made like $200 million. Yeah. So domestically. So, that's, so it had a crazy big weekend last weekend. Like... Yeah, maybe people For an just... R-rated movie. Right. And maybe people are saying, okay, we know Solo is going to stick around in theaters for a while because these kind of movies always do, so we'll just go catch it the next time we get paid, as opposed to on opening weekend, which is also a holiday weekend, and we got other plans. Maybe we're traveling, so... Maybe you just don't want to go see a damn movie. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, we didn't really want to go see it. And <laughs> no, we, we didn't. We ended up going to see it, and we ended up liking it a whole lot better than we thought we would. So. And the the actually, the theater was not crowded, but it no. was uh, not uncrowded either. Well, I mean, including us, there were maybe, what, 30 people in that yeah. theater? Yeah, I which mean, I think is pretty good for a 5 o'clock showing on a Memorial Day you know, when people are usually out grilling like right. villains. Yeah, <laughs> grilling like villains. Look at you. You've only had one beer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, yeah, I, one other thing I want to mention, though, is uh, Woody Harrelson. He played a major role in this movie. He was really good. I like Woody Harrelson as I an, really like an actor. I really like Woody yeah. But whoever decided to give him a 90s boy band haircut... <laughs> Why? Why did you do that? So, All I could see was the Backstreet Boys every time I looked at him. So I don't know how you feel about this, Coco, but every time I looked at Woody Harrelson's haircut, I thought, that's what I look like. <laughs> no, I look, that's... Pretty, I look pretty stylish. I look like Woody Harrelson with my new haircut that I got. So now that you think it's the Backstreet Boys, I'm going to reconsider my cosmetic options. What are you, you going to do? Are you going to get like a mohawk? I'm going to get a faux hawk. Faux hawk. Yeah. yeah there we how go. About that? All right, I like it. So, Solo, even though people are talking it down and everything like that, it's the number four movie of 2018 already. Wow. And we're just about halfway through 2018. Not quite. And, and of course, the summer blockbusters have not launched. Right. So, the series of sequels that we're bound to see in the coming months have not been out. Right. We've but, still got Ant-Man and the Wasp, which is another Marvel movie coming out in a couple months. not going to be anywhere close to this. You, I, don't, I you just, don't think so? I just don't think so. I mean, it's... Paul Rudd and some woman that I didn't recognize. <laughs> Evangeline Lilly from Lost. Right. <laughs> so again, I didn't I didn't recognize her. And Michael Douglas and it just seems like it's I don't know. The, Where was he during the old Avengers Infinity War thing? Well, if we watched so I've seen the first Ant Man and I've also seen Captain America Civil War and I can't. Because you've remember. seen every Avengers movie. I known actually to man. I have not, actually, but if I'm I remember it being mentioned why Ant-Man couldn't be involved in the whole Infinity War thing, and I can't remember exactly why that is, but there's a reason. But Because he had to do I Love You Man too. <laughs> <laughs> does does uh, Jason... Loving the beast. <laughs> does Jason Siegel start picking up after his dog in, uh, in, in the second movie? <laughs> like, is there personal growth as a character? Like... <laughs> there's a lot of character development. He wouldn't come back and do the sequel unless there was some character development. Unless I don't he... want to play the same role over and over again. Not only does he pick up after his dog, but he owns like a dog poo scooping company. He picks up after other dogs. <laughs> right. Because like, those are a thing now. Like People hire other people to pick up after How their dogs. How lazy are we as a society? <laughs> Where you have to hire somebody to pick up after your dog. If you don't want to pick up the dog poo, here's an idea. Don't get a dog. This is why our download numbers aren't very big. Because we go off the rails. Because like we're we- alienating <laughs> dog poo picker-upper buyers. Because we started talking about Han Solo and now we're talking about dog crap. No, I think this is like, why America is missing out. Because we cover a wide range of topics that in is, one window. That is very true. Well, I do I do want to uh, kind of uh, go back to... Um, the movie? <laughs> well, because we were talking about this earlier. Um, 
about feeling bad for poor Alden Ehrenreich. Yes. Like, well, first of all, apparently the exit scores for the people who have actually gone to see the movie have been pretty good. Like, there is... Overall. Overall. The whole, whole movie. Yeah, like, there is good word of mouth. Like, not as good as um, The Force Awakens or Rogue One, but good enough that... Which I didn't think were great. Yeah. This is my favorite of those four movies. Wow, really? Yeah. Wow, awesome. Yeah. So, So, there is, like... It does bode well, maybe for like more long term box office that yep. people will go see it. But we were talking about poor Alden Ehrenreich. Like people are gonna like maybe crap all over him. Like this could be his John Carter. Like for those of you who maybe <laughs> remember, like the big Disney let's flop. Let's go back to Disney again. Let's go back to Disney again. Like the big Disney flop a few years ago. They spent four hundred million dollars making and marketing John Carter, and then it didn't. It made back maybe half of that. Well, and also as somebody who was part of the Disney family during that whole push, mm-hmm. I remember that they marketed the heck out of that movie, mm-hmm. and they also were pushing everything to, to Disney employees, saying, yeah. "Here, this is going to be the greatest thing. Get your John Carter." souvenir mug you know like they were really <laughs> right? pumping up oh john uh-huh. carter pjs for little babies <laughs> john and, carter halloween costumes john <laughs> carter and then meanwhile the public was like what uh, jimmy carter's brother is there a movie <laughs> what? Right. i don't oh, want to go see awesome. that what kind of a movie title is that right so and taylor kitsch he had previously been in like friday night lights and some other stuff and this is supposed to make him a star mm-hmm. and there's supposed to be sequels and then it just utterly tanked and got savaged reviews okay and so i have a tip coming out of the whole john carter thing and yes. also coming out of michael clayton which was a really good movie oh the, yeah the my... guy's name you like that movie too yeah don't name a movie after somebody <laughs> like don't make the movie title some t- character's name unless mm-hmm. it's like john f kennedy oh, yeah. or muhammad ali yeah or somebody who's instantly recognizable so right. you're going to make a story like Iron Man, yes, or yeah. Thor, yes, I Captain America, yeah. right? They're superheroes. We get right. that, but like John Carter, it could if you don't really know who John Carter is, or you don't know who mm-hmm. um, anybody else with that kind of common name, like Michael Clayton. It's right. Like Michael Clayton was not about Michael Clayton. It was this was this great movie about this guy who was a fixer upper of uh, broken situations, and he was a bit of a heavy and a bit of a tough guy. Mm-hmm. And like the, just the guy's name, so yeah. Don't, Movie people out there who listen to our podcast, I know you do, <laughs> and just if, not admitting it. And if so, please call us about Pup Kirk so that we can get this off the ground. Because <laughs> we're working on a script right now. <laughs> but you just got to not do that, people out there. Don't make titles for movies with characters that we've never heard of or very few people know of. Yeah, toes. So so Alden Ehrenreich, who played Solo, yeah, was so, also in... Oh, yeah. Hail Caesar. I think we should mention Hail Caesar. And he was great in Hail Caesar because he was just a complete parody of a numbskull actor. Which, now that you've told me what it's about, um, before we started recording this, I actually kind of want to see it. Like, I thought it looked kind of dumb when it's, it... It's kind of dumb, but it's yeah. it's kind of okay. Yeah, so, like, oh, It's kind it. of, oh, brother, where art thou, kind of dumb. Mm-hmm. And it's, a, it's the Coen brothers, too, right? Yeah. So... And George Clooney's in it. Uh-huh. So there's a bit of that kind of vibe to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, or Brother, Where Art Thou? I thought was very funny. I really enjoyed that movie. I didn't enjoy this one as much, uh, but I still enjoyed it. And it would be a worthwhile excursion. But, so Alden Ehrenreich plays the moron actor who gets dropped in. He's, <laughs> he's like a cowboy star from the 50s, I believe it is. And then he gets dropped into this like merchant ivory type <laughs> movie as the lead and he's going to be the big new star that and he just like a, can't pull it off that sounds like a good setup yeah so it's and the, but there's also a kidnapping and there's a bunch of messy stuff in the background mm-hmm. the Coen brothers have kind of I think they've lost their curveball a little bit but um, it was it was okay so it was a decent movie uh-huh. so a good star mm-hmm. and potentially able to carry on the franchise of Han Solo yeah he uh, he said in Esquire that he signed for three solo movies so We'll see whether any more so of them. So three movies get, as solo, but not yeah. three separate movies. Well, solo. who who knows? I mean, who knows if the contract stipulates that? Because if there's a Lando standalone, he could totally. He could be in that. He could be in that. Right. I mean, that maybe might count as one of his one of his movies. I don't. Or maybe they're going to do a, a Chewbacca backstory. Yeah. See, now I would watch the heck out of that. I, so Chewbacca with the origins of we talked about this with. Han Solo. Mm-hmm. That was one of the things I didn't like about this movie. Yeah. So I 
So uh, Han Solo was thrown into a pit. He was supposed to be like the beast's Mauled dinner. Mauled by the beast, yes. And it was Chewy, And Chewie was supposed to maul him and eat him. And it was a young Chewy. It was a young Chewie. Only, only 190 years old. Right. A young, um, fur, a young furry Chewy. Yeah. And instead of Chewy eating him, obviously, they teamed up and they escaped. And then they became partners in crime. Literally. But without, <laughs> <laughs> without first beating each other up. Or right. at least Chewy beating the heck out of Han Solo. Yeah, and I was that made me that made me sad because I I didn't want to see Chewie in chains. Like I didn't want to see like starving enslaved Chewie eaten like stormtroopers or whatever. So <laughs> like, the, yeah, so that that disturbed me a little bit is that so you see I think not a carcass but sort of like uh like old clothing from yeah. somebody who had uh-huh. been eaten. Yeah. So uh, wait a minute, like so, so Chewbacca is is not a friend of the people yeah. because I got the sense from all the Star Wars movies that I've seen that he was sort of helpful. So now, yeah. if I, I'm it just spoiled it a little bit for me, is like, well, he gets mad at at Luke Skywalker and he's going to maybe eat his arm. <laughs> right. Like what's that right. changes the whole perspective for me. The whole like that's not possible. Like maybe maybe Luke didn't lose his hand because it was cut off by Darth Vader. Like maybe, maybe Chewie, Chewie ate it. Maybe there's a reason they call him Chewie. Yeah, exactly. Because he's always chewing on people and they yeah. tell him don't do that. Bad rug. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. Yeah. So I was that made me very sad. Not, that like, made me very sad too. Nobody wants to see enslaved Chewie. Well, and that was a cliche too because it's like, oh, how do two people get together in a movie? Movie. Uh-huh. Oh, and then they form a partnership later on. Well, they have conflict in the beginning. They <laughs> hate each other, and then they overcome that conflict and become best friends. It's like, right. oh, come on, right? Like Chewie, it's not like uh, Chewie couldn't have been like Lando's like first mate, and then Chewie decided he liked Han better, right. and you know, or even just like, ship, like Chewie saves Han Solo from something that because Chewie is an intelligent character. He's yeah. not like just a. Uh, a growling rug like he <laughs> seems to be portrayed in the media <laughs> and i love how when they first meet like han speaks wookie and which he, is news to me yeah which is totally news and then, you know like their whole first conversation is like speaking wookie and then after that they just go back to chewy speaks wookie and han speaks english and right. they they understand each and other and may i like, add for those of you who are not fluent in wookie it's broken wookie <laughs> it's not exactly <laughs> he's not fluent in wookie <laughs> right like it's uh like you know, me bust you out. Like, you know, like his pronouns are all wrong. Right. It's, just, it's, it's like horrific. Cookie Monster Wookie. Like, <laughs> <laughs> to mix up our Muppets here. You know? Wookie Monster. <laughs> Wookie Monster. There we go. High five. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Off the rails again with Coco and Dolts. <laughs> right. That's what we do here. <laughs> so, do we need to uh, wrap this up? I guess we should wrap it up. Do we need to bring the Falcon uh, back in into port? I don't know. Bring the uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> thumbs up, a grade out of ten, a grade of letters. What do you think of Solo, a Wookiee story? I I liked the performances. I thought the action was, as we have said multiple times, thrilling. I thought the story was pretty good. I couldn't see any indication that it was a troubled production. So I'd give it a solid B to B minus. I liked it. I think I'm in the B category. Maybe a good 7 out of 10. Maybe uh, almost thumbs all the way up. Wow. I uh, I liked it a lot. Um, I didn't notice uh, that it was a Ron Howard movie, movie until his brother showed up in the movie. and Because <laughs> his brother always shows up in his movies. And uh, it reminded me, it's like, oh yeah, Ron Howard. But it felt very much like a good thriller. Lots mm-hmm. of good suspense and tension, like you mentioned. And if I hadn't have read all the stuff before the movie, mm-hmm. I think I would have, uh, I would have not come out of there second guessing anything. I would have been like, oh, maybe this actor would have been better. Maybe that director right. would have been better. Mm-hmm. It was, it was a perfectly entertaining uh, a movie, and it didn't seem like it was nine hours long like some of the other movies we've seen. So. I'm I'm with it. I'm with. I recommend Solo. And as a matter of fact, like I said, it's the best of the four Star Wars, most most recent Star Wars movies to me. There you have it, folks. Coco and Dalt's going contrarian with our Solo, a Star Wars story review. Everybody else says it's meh, kind of at best, and we wholeheartedly recommend. And just when you think you've got us figured out, and 
expecting me to dump on the superhero slash Star Wars movies and Coco to completely defend them. I'm actually on board with this one. So stay well, tuned. You never know what's going to happen next time. Well, but you like the Star Wars movies, though, yeah? Like, I the, thought that was... I like the first three or whatever we're calling them. Yeah, yeah, the yeah the 70s slash 80s ones. The but ones you, with the young Han Solo in them. But you've seen... <laughs> the I have seen young. the prequels. You, you haven't seen the prequels, but you've seen the most recent ones as yes. well, like the... Yeah. But so. I didn't, yeah. You didn't love them, though. I didn't love them because, yeah. well, to me, Rogue, uh, whatever it was that we saw, was the same movie as... Oh, The Force Awakens? The Force Awakens was the same movie as Star Wars A New Hope or whatever mm-hmm. it was called. Yeah. It was the exact same movie, just different leads. Mm-hmm. So, but anyway. But there you have it. There you have it. For another week of Coco and Daltz, we take you down the solo trail. <laughs> down the rabbit hole. Down the rabbit hole. So for another week, I'm not Coco. And I'm not Dots. <laughs>